Hi, hello, good evening, my officers. Welcome back to this course called as Fundamentals or Basics of Economy in just 30 minutes. This is Nishan Jumuddin, your Eju Kedan Academy, an expert in Indian economy, current affairs, and MCQs. So, now in today's class, we'll be continuing with the same topic of discussion that is inflation. So, in previous class, we had a discussion based on the important concepts or terms related to inflation. So, in that, let's say uh, five to six topics we discussed. So, remaining seven to eight topics based on inflation, which means that everything and anything that is connected to the so called broad concept, the macroeconomic concept called as inflation, will be discussed in today's class. Like what is inflation tax, what is inflation spiral, accounting, premiums, stagflation, reflation, squeeflation, sub, kuch like that. Along with another important concept called as Phillips curve, which is very, very important from the UPSC problems perspective as to what is Phillips curve. Okay. Followed by the updation of the related current affairs based on the topic and also the previous year questions or the mock questions based on whichever topic we are discussing. So, already, yes, indeed, you should be because this is a very, very interesting part. Lot of new, new concepts you are going to study in today's class. So, guys, before that, a quick look into the schedule of my other classes which is happening in an academy is every day 6 to 7, you we have a course called as Top 1000 MCQ series to ace your UPC problems 2021. Just look in the description of this particular video. Towards the end, you can find my Academy profile. Click that, follow me there. There you can see special classes, the top 1000 MCQ series class schedule. Apply the code Nisha IAS Live or Nisha.Nujmudin, whichever you want to watch the classes for free, the quality classes, and also to download the PDF. Clear? Now, apart from that, uh, I have been doing a lot of plus courses, the batch courses. Currently, NCRT batch is over and from June 16th onwards, Prilam Sampurna 1200 MCQs in current affairs. It's uh, monthly, instead of going through the monthly compilation of current affairs, we'll be doing it in the form of MCQs with the proper 360 degree coverage and Vagira stuffs like that. To enroll for that also, the same code, Nisha IAS Life. So, more about that towards the end of the class, I'll tell you. Okay, so now let's quickly have a look into what the topic of the discussion. So, here we go. That is, the important concepts or terms related to inflation. So, now we have something called as inflation tax. So, now how is the tax connected to the so-called topic that is inflation? Let's quickly have a look into it. So, now it refers to the loss of value by holders of cash. So, in simple terms, I can tell you that when the government is spending more than the revenue or receipts they are uh, getting, for that, what will the government do when the revenue is less through taxation and the expenditure is more? The next thing is there is something called as fiscal deficit or FD, right? So, what will the government do? The government will resort to borrowing. So, when they borrow automatically, what happened? It is adding up to their liability. So, now this is leading to inflation again because when the government is borrowing money to manage the money supply in the economy or to manage the ex extra expenditure because the revenue is less, money is flowing into economy. So, now slowly what happens, the prices start increasing, which is called as inflation. So, now it is an extra spending from the part of the government, apart from the income, what they are getting. Don't you think so? Yes. So, this extra spending is actually borne by the people, we the people, when we go to the markets to buy the products and services, because we will be offered the product at a higher cost. You got the point. So, the reason for that is inflation. So, now what is happening? The tax is acting as an inflation over here. That is when we have to pay a product at a higher price from the market. Because the tax is higher there, the price of the commodity is also increased over there. So, automatically tax is act acting like, uh, so, it, uh, so here it acts like a tax, the inflation. You got the point. This is called as inflation tax in simple terms. So, to know more about this particular concept, I can tell you that. This inflation tax, okay, it's a type of taxation which the government operates by altering what of making few changes to the money supply. Let's say for example, if the money supply is increasing, then the value of existing money will definitely decrease. The ulta or the opposite relationship. So now, creating a type of tax on the existing money holder becomes a point. Leading to what? Something called as inflation tax. So it's a kind of metamorphical representation, guys. Such kind of inflation tax, I can tell you, of the economic disadvantage which the bearers of cash or its equivalent undergo a single currency denomination. It's clear? In case of such kind of inflation tax, what happens? The disadvantage or the demerits will appear owing to the so-called impact. What is the impact which has been created by inflation? And it is functioning as a hidden tax. You're not uh, knowing exactly how much of the tax has been included in the price of the commodity because the prices appear to be high. You got the point. This is called as inflation tax in simple terms. Perfect. 
at the end of the day the burden is on the consumers when they go to the market and buy the commodity be it essential goods com- comfortable goods or let's say luxury goods the same thing now let's have a quick look into nature of inflation tax it's very very important now do you think such kind of inflation tax they involve something called as debt elimination that is borrow- borrowing ka elimination if you see they does not involve anything as such simply by eliminating cash or currency what will the government do the government of a country start hastening the liquidity of money supply which will again initiate a lot of pressures because of the price rise or inflation so now when there is too much of inflationary pressures or price rise in the economy for various various commodities what happens the tax which is applicable on you and me as a consumer because on our income and the expense uh, what we are getting that is extracting the extra or the additional cash from the country's inhabitants or we the people this is how uh, the inflation tax is functioning in an economy in the most simplified manner clear i hope it is crystal clear for you so you just need to understand what is inflation tax that's enough and how it is functioning so maybe in consider the following statements or so you may get one or two you know questions based on this in the context of practical applicability theek hai now the next important topic is inflationary spiral so now spiral keyword is quite famous in this uh, you know college and school ka perspective where you have the spiral notes right it's it's nothing like that it's something similar to that that is spiral it is basically the result out of a process of price and wage interaction now whenever you hear the term inflationary spiral the next thing that comes to your brain should be the laborers because laborers are somebody who get wages that is why it is called as wage spiral in simple terms okay so now inflationary spiral can also be called as wage spiral what is meaning of that let's say for example due to increase in wage prices okay due to increase in wa- uh, not wa- uh, due to increase in wages prices will start increasing let's say for example you're working in a company you may get let's say as a laborer 350 per day but now they are increasing the wages to 500 per day extra 150 so automatically the laborers will feel chalo we have got extra 150 totally we are getting 500 with us but what is happening in the economy the prices are also shooting up so now the wage that you have got the increase in wage what you have got in your uh, in your from your company is matching with the price that is shooting up or rising in the market because when the wages are increasing prices are also going up to match the higher price in uh, price wage rate in where guys in the market this is uh, called as spiral when one is increasing the other is also spiraling up and increasing right it's called as inflationary spiral or wage price spiral clear i repeat wage price uh, price uh, spiral so now uh, do you think any economy was implementing this yes of course the so called developed economy us that is your america guys it is very much first discovered i can tell you initially it was uh, you know discovered uh, in us economy take i can just write it in us economy in the year 1935 i can tell you it was discovered as one of the reason for increase in inflation during the years 1935 in us economy clear there is a reason why wage spiral was also put put across simply like that economists don't come with concepts there should be some sort of reason and this is a reason for your inflationary or your wage price spiral now that should do with regard to this particular concept in the most simplified way i hope it is crystal clear for you people and now what happens to spiral automatically spiral is keeping on and on twisting right so yes similarly inflationary spiral also leads to more inflation because the consumers will start demanding more goods the price will actually increase because demand is more and automatically when the price is increasing the laborers who are working they need to meet up the higher prices they'll start demanding more wages and now what happen the production cost will increase because only then the producer can pay high prices to the laborers with which the laborers can buy high uh, buy commodities from the market at a higher price so it's a kind of continuation stuff everywhere it has been connected you understand so more inflation is happening because of wage spiral or let's say inflationary spiral in simple terms now another important point to be noted in this context is it can be better explained as a macroeconomic theory to explain the cause and effect relationship between rising wages and rising prices or inflation is clear now let's move to the another topic of discussion the important terms or concepts related to inflation that is inflation premium so premium basically is in the context of insurance you have heard the term premium right so let me tell you quickly what is it it is nothing but the bonus brought by inflation to whom to the borrowers if i'm a borrower the bonus that is the which is brought to me through this price rise or inflation is called as inflation premium okay let me give an example to you let's say for example a borrower okay you have borrowed 10000 rupees at the rate of 10% interest 
I just write it. So you have got uh, let's say 10,000 rupees at 10% interest rate. Okay. Now you have to pay which means 1000 rupees as interest every year. So 10% of 10,000 is 1000 rupees interest now. So 1000 rupees interest you have to pay every year. Now because of the price rise of inflation, the value of this 1000 is less than what it should really be. I repeat, due to inflation or price rise, the value of rupees 10,000 which is an interest rate is actually less than what it should really be. So now, if I am the borrower or you are the borrower of this 10,000 rupees who has agreed for paying 1,000 rupees as an interest, now he or she, the borrower will be paying an interest rate which is just a nominal interest rate. That's it. Clear? So now increasing the interest rate, uh, uh, taking inflation into account will lead to what? Real interest rate. Whenever you take inflation into consideration and then you increase the interest amount, let's say from 1,000 to 1,200 or 500, that is called as real inflation rate. When you do not take inflation into consideration, it is called as nominal interest rate. Clear? If you see the banks, what do they do, you know? Normally, the lending institutions like bank, they will actually lose a lot of money due to inflation, guys. Because they keep collecting interest at a very nominal rate of interest. Let's say, for example, you went today and got 1 lakh from the bank and you are charged 10,000 interest rate. Just after two weeks, there is too much of price rise or inflation in the economy in every sector. Can the bank call and tell you, Chalo, you pay as uh, you know, 20,000 as interest? No, they cannot. It is fixed. So what happens? No matter there is a rise in inflation or uh, a rise in price rise or inflation, the bank will still have to get the same nominal interest rate only, which means it will end up in losses for the bank during such kind of situations. You got the point. So now, the difference uh, between what guys, let's say for example, when banks are charging normal interest rate and lending and inflation is taken, are not taken into account. But then when you take the real interest means inflation is taken into account. The difference between these is called as inflation premium. Clear? And now do you think a country India adopted such kind of practice? Yes. If you see in the year 2003. Okay. The banks of our country India. You can just make a note of it. The banks in our country India. We indexed inflation. The banks in uh, India indexed inflation. So I repeat, in the year 2003, the banks in India index inflation into consideration and made it a real interest rate so that these banks will start getting some sort of profit instead of ending up in losses. That was happened in the year 2003. Clear? So thus, when there is a rising inflation premium, what is the meaning? All these lending institutions like your banks, they are depleting their profit. That shouldn't be the case. So to neutralize the inflation premium only, the lender take recourse to increasing normal rate of interest. Clear? That is the banks, what I've told you. And that happened in a country, India, in the year 2003. Now, the next important topic of discussion, we have something called as Phillips curve. What is Phillips curve? See, the, the keyword curve represents a graphical representation. Similarly, a graphical representation between inflation and another term called as unemployment. That is called as Phillips curve. So now, according to this, I can tell you, there is a trade-off between inflation and UE. UE is a short form for unemployment, okay? Don't think UE as UAE and all, it is UE is unemployment here. So when there's a trade-off between these two uh, factors, that is inflation and unemployment, it's called as Phillips curve. And since 1960, this particular term was very popular in a lot of countries, guys, with most countries who were opting for the high inflation with the view of permanently checking the unemployment. We know that when there is too much of unemployment, people will not get money. When they have no uh, un uh, income, in employment means no income or no money, automatically living standard decreases. Then your GDP per capita sub -kush decreases, impacting the growth and development. But here, in this Phillips curve, there is a trade-off or a relationship between inflation and unemployment. When you express that, it is called as Phillips curve. Clear? You can see unemployment, you can see inflation rate in the X and Y axis. When the unemployment is 3%, inflation is 5%. When unemployment is increasing to 4%, what is happening to inflation? It reduces to 4%. When unemployment is 6%, inflation is reducing to 2%. You got the point. So 2% inflation, 6% unemployment rate is increasing. When unemployment is decreasing, inflation rate is decreasing, unemployment rate is increasing. It's ultra, it's having an inverse relationship. They are not directly related. You got the point. So in simple terms, I can tell you that uh, the so-called Phillips curve okay, was put forward by an economist called as A.W. Phillips. That is why it's called as Phillips curve. But the so-called idea, right, it was challenged by another economist in the year 1970 called as Milton Friedman. He is a monetary economist. He said that such kind of trade-off or relationship between unemployment and inflation, they have a short term. You can't say it for long term. Because see, people are expecting a rise in price or let's say higher inflation. 
and then they demand higher wages and unemployment and unemployment will rise back to its natural rate it's everything like for a short term then sub course turns back into normal uh, scenario so the natural rate of unemployment is the unemployment rate which occurs at full employment right when the economy is producing at full potential which is again a hypothetical condition i can tell you because full employment is something which you can't uh, every time expect in such kind of mixed economy rather than as per the classical or the traditional economists told you full employment is always an assumption i can say clear you just need to understand what that is all about clear so before going to the current affairs perspective of the so called uh, philips curve or unemployment curve perspective let me quickly tell you few other important concepts now there is something called as a stagflation what is stagflation this is also connected to uh, you know unemployment that is why i am telling you now this concept is what you know i'll tell you wait unemployment plus inflation that is presence of both unemployment and inflation is called as stagflation it is called as presence of both stagnation and inflation this unemployment is called as stag uh, i mean you categorize as stagnation so stagnation plus price rise or inflation that is also called as stagflation let's say for example you have price rise at the same time unemployment also so the economy is stagnant nothing can work you understand so now the convection or the traditional thinkers they say that if there is a price rise then unemployment will reduce what nonsense is that when there is a price rise do you think unemployment will reduce people will get more employment what connection is that it's totally ultra right but that is what your stagflation is all about and if you see in the year 1970s okay you can just note it you can just make a note of it in the year 1970s what happened the us economy again the us economy only experienced such kind of stagflation i can tell you this happens when the economy is stagnate in is in a stagnation state and the government is trying and putting the heart and soul to trigger the economy by a lot of policies etc etc now due to the government policy slowly price will increase but however stagnation will still continue clear this is the situation in which you will go for such kind of uh, you know concept called as stagflation i hope it is crystal clear for you people now keeping the so called relationship between inflation and unemployment in brain uh, in your mind so with regard to stagflation with regard to inflation uh, uh, you know philips curve that is philips curve and all let's quickly have a look at the current affairs perspective that is nairu n a i r u nairu non accelerating inflation rate of unemployment let's quickly have a look at it what is it all about there is something called as nairu that is non accelerating inflation rate of unemployment that's a full form what is that let's say for example the monetary policy put forward by rbi they trying to hold back the unemployment below natural rate automatically inflation increases what is the unemployment below natural rate for that you should know what is natural rate of unemployment that is when there is full employment in the economy when the economy is producing at the full potential you can say unemployment is at a natural rate when they are below the uh, natural rate that unemployment means the economy is not producing the full potential you got the point so automatically price is increasing now it is the kind of rate of unemployment which is consistent or continuous with the constant rate of inflation or price right so at the non accelerating inflation rate of unemployment i can tell you the upward and downward forces of price increase or decrease and the income with regard to wages of the laborers they'll start neutralizing or get matched with each other so now what happened the upward and downward force of price change is getting neutralized or equal to wages or uh, the income that the pay laborers are getting so now there is no tendency for any sort of change in the rate of inflation it will still be constant so thus i can tell you that non accelerating inflation rate is the lowest unemployment rate that an economy can sustain without any sort of increase or upward pressure on inflation rate or price rise clear this is very important because it has come for the upsc prelims examinations previously based on nairu this question has been taken in the context of inflation unemployment the concepts based on that philips curve based on stagflation only this particular question was framed clear that's why i told you what this is all about now the next important topic of discussion from inflation is reflation see remember in yesterday's class when i taught you disinflation i taught you reflation the opposite of disinflation is reflation remember disinflation is what when there is inflation but the rate is decreasing you got the point so disinflation is actually medium uh, it's a situation between inflation and deflation it is not a sudden drop in price rather the rate of inflation is slowly decreasing there is price rise but it the, that so called price rise is not increasing or the price rise is not decreasing rather slowly inflation is decreasing that is called as disinflation the opposite of that is reflation so let me quickly have a look into it for example okay forget about all these slides and all let me tell you in layman or let's say common man perspective 
if there is a recession what is recession slowing down of economic activities right now if there is a recession economy due to lack of demand now what will the government do the government will immediately take a very very conscious policy of increasing or inflating the prices by increasing the spending of government this is called as reflation so reflation is kind of inflating something okay it is a situation which is deliberately matlab intentionally brought by the government to trigger the economy so that we are put back to track let's take the case of covid 19 pandemic what happened to our economy we were slowly going to recession poverty rates were oh my goodness it is too much so now we understood that economy if it completely goes into recession things will change so now to trigger the economy back to track we came with something called as atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan the 20 lakh crore economic stimulus package remember so something like that you can take an example clear just that government has taken conscious policy deliberately to trigger the economy back to track that's called as inflation sorry uh, reflation clear that is higher expenditure tax cut interest rate cuts printing money all these things guys deliberately the government will reduce the unemployment uh, that is a situation deliberately brought by government to reduce unemployment increase demand aiming for higher growth so they'll start spending more and more for all the activities they'll reduce the taxation level they'll reduce interest rates so now people will have uh, better uh, you know access towards the uh, economy and also when you print more money money supply is increasing so economy is getting back to track now it is getting triggered you can connect this to the unconventional monetary policy tools the related uh, current affairs of this is unconventional monetary policy tools what are they i've taught you in the previous classes quantitative easing helicopter money long term repo operations etc etc which means they want to infuse or inject money into the economy to bring situation back into normal in so called crisis or situations right you can connect this point uh, reflation to that perspective as well now stagflation i told you presence of both stagnation and inflation that is both unemployment and price rise it, it is uh, uh, always there fine that is when the there is a price rise then unemployment will reduce that is what they said right you can just go through the same thing so thus the situation of rising prices along with falling growth and unemployment uh, sorry falling growth and employment is called as stagflation what nonsense is that right but that is called as stagflation it has already happened in us i told you right us economy has actually uh, you know experienced this in the year 1970s because the fall in output will automatically cause employment to fall they are saying in the economy along with fall in growth and unemployment will increase and uh, if you see the falling economic growth will lead to increase in prices because the supply is less demand is more right automatically cost push inflation will be become more dangerous than the demand for inflation demand will be less but then supply will also be less but then you have to uh, cater to the needs of the existing population now that's why now the next one uh, before that you can just see i've given a few examples or let's a few more important information regarding stagflation it is uh, actually coined by a person called as lane macleod who was a conservationist uh, party mp in uk guys way back in the 1965 clear now we have something called as squeeflation very interesting to know now it is squeeflation is something getting squeed okay so whenever you hear the term squeeflation just write one keyword near to that food inflation actually squeeflation is called as food inflation i can tell you because this squeeflation is what you know basically i can tell it refers to inflation refers to increase in general price level whereas when there is an increase exclusively in the price of food items whereas the price of non food items the price of food items means your vegetables your groceries your rice which sab kuch is increasing whereas non food uh, food price items your furnitures your tvs your fridge sab kuch they are not having any sort of change that is called as squeeflation clear and if you see in our country in the year 2000 uh, you know 9 10 we experienced such a situation where there was a too much of rise in the price of food items or essentials whereas a non food items like your furniture chairs tv sofa fridges sab kuch that remained stable the price remained stable so if you see during those days the food inflation was let's say around 20% but the overall wholesale price index was uh, just 11% So now this led to the definition of new concept called as squeeflation. It is called as squeed inflation because the price rise is just due to food items alone, not due to any other perspective. Exclusively when the price of food items uh, increases, it's called as squeeflation. Clear? Let's say for example, suddenly if you see in this COVID-19 pandemic, we could see a rise in the price of onions and potatoes, right? Right. Whereas everything else was normal. So especially onions, you could see a rise in price. Let's say like like hundred rupees was uh, been sold for even for one kg. All these examples of squeeflation. 
Next, you have a beautiful topic called as inflation accounting. It's very interesting to know what is inflation accounting, guys. Let me have quickly tell you what that is. You are getting accountable for inflation. Do you think so? Yes, something like that. Now, in the context of, uh, let's say, corporate profit accounting, the so-called term inflation accounting is very popular. Basically, due to inflation or price rise, what happens? The profit of the firms or companies, now, they get overstated. Let's say, for example, if you are a firm or a company, you are calculating the profit. You will calculate profit. Let's say for 10, cro 10 lakh is your profit. After adjusting inflation and all, you got 9 lakh in your hand. So now, after adjusting the effect of current level of inflation, when you are calculating a profit, that process is called as inflation accounting in simple terms. Such profits, what you get after adjusting uh, or calculating inflation, the remaining amount, what you get, it is called as real profit of the firm, which you can actually compare to the historic rate of inflation with the base year or whatever it is. So now, in corporate uh, scenario, what happens is that when uh, they declare the profit, it may appear that the profit has increased to them because of inflation's effect, which is just a normal profit. But the real profit, if you want, means you have to minus the profit or reduce the profit by taking into consideration what inflation or price rise. This type of accounting or process is called as inflation accounting in very, very simple terms. Clear? Only in the context of corporate uh, profit accounting, you use such kind of terms. This is enough for you to know regarding what is inflation accounting. Is it very clear for all of you till here? I hope it is crystal clear. Any doubts, any queries, feel free to put it via the chat box of this particular video. Fine? Perfect. So we are done with all the important concepts or terms related to inflation. So those who have not got the previous terms, feel free to get back to the previous video because few, let's say around five to six terms have been discussed there as well. So today we discussed 10 topics in this video in a very, you can see in a very short, crisp and to the point manner and also a proper updation of current affairs. That is the highlight of my classes. Everything in short scripts to the point manner, but with a detailed understanding and saving a lot of time. Clear? Perfect. Now, so totally I think 16 uh, terms I have taught you. So now, you can very well go and say anywhere that Chalo, everything and anything under, under inflation we have studied in ma'am's class. Chalo, okay? Now, let's quickly have a look into the current affairs perspective. Few important trending current affairs of this so-called terms. We spoke about stagflation. Presence of both stagnation and inflation. That is unemployment and price rise. Do you think a country India is facing this? Come on, let's have a look into this current affairs perspective. Now, although it appears so at first glance that Chalo, we have a price rise and we have unemployment. Too much of people are unemployed, right? So we may feel, okay, we do have a situation of stagflation. But the reality is that India is not yet facing stagflation. We do have unemployment. We do have price rise on one side. But that doesn't mean that we are facing stagflation. That is, compared to the past or the previous year, our country is not growing as fast it used to be. But still we are growing at the person, at the rate of what 5% I can say. And the expected year as per the World Bank, IMF and all the other uh, you know, international institutions projected figure of GDP and all, we will be growing. We are expected to grow faster in the coming years. Take care. And it is very much important to analyze the fact that or it is true that something called as retail inflation. That is in the context of CPI, Consumer Price Index. Okay. It has been quite high in the past few months. And the reason for this uh, spike or increase is temporary because it's caused by a spurt in the agriculture commodities after some unseasonal rains. And now if you see the COVID-19 pandemic, lack of uh, supply, all these things have been uh, kind of adding to these factors. Now with the better food management, the so-called food inflation or let's say squeeflation, what you studied a couple of slides back, they have come down. Now there is something called a score inflation. That is the most important inflation where you don't take into consideration the rise in the price of food and energy. That is, uh, 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 you know, that is also still, uh, you know, banging, I can tell you. So now, you see in this particular current affairs concept, so many terms of inflations are popping up. So because you studied the terms or concepts based on inflation only, you can understand them better. Now did you understand why did we study all these concepts, the 16 concepts? Because when you study current affairs, it will pop up here and there. So you shouldn't be confused. Simple logic. Clear? Now, with regard to the Central Bank of Country RBI, take it. The retail inflation, that is your consumer price index, it has been very well with RBI's target level of 4%. Because we always wanted to target inflation, right? At the rate of 4% with plus or minus band of 2%. The meaning of that is 246. What is the meaning of that? 246 means up to 6% inflation, can, the maximum it can increase, but not beyond that. And up to 2, they can decrease, not beyond uh, 2 again. The ideal is 4. So now, when there's a sudden increase in few months, what happened? Automatically, we are getting out of the so-called target in our country. India is facing a kind of stagflation, I can say. Right? But then, literally, we are not facing, but still, yeah. 
if this continues it will be a problem so we are trying to put in a lot of measures the government is trying to put a lot of policies to ensure that things are back in track clear so that's all for the day my young officers it's time for us to test what we studied so here we go one of the important questions from inflation uh, topic when a firm calculates its profit after adjusting the effects of current level of inflation this process is known as what this is a question from the UPSC prelims 2018 very simple question National income accounting, inflation accounting, super normal profit, normal profit. Everyone knows that. It is none other than what? Option number B, which is the inflation accounting, right? Did you understand why did I teach you inflation accounting and all? So people will think that why we are studying inflation accounting, premium, spiral and all. You see for UPSC, they have asked a question. They are very smart because UPSC want to test your knowledge as to whether you know about these concepts related to inflation. You may feel that is not important. But you see from where the question has come? In the previous year examination so all these concepts are very very important this year you may get a question based on wage spiral that is inflation spiral or let's say you may get it on uh, you know inflation premium reflation or even stagflation so you have to be a little careful while study all the while you are studying all these concepts clear i hope this class was literally clear to you in this particular context next one phillips curve the next important topic even if you see in your upsc problems 2016 this question was asked Phillips curve advocates a relationship between which of the two aggregates of economy? Very simple. Option A, inflation and unemployment, demand and supply of money. Three, supply of money and rate of interest. Four, rate of interest and unemployment. Quick, which one do you think will be the answer? Definitely unemployment is there. Is it inflation or rate of interest? That's the next question. Here we go. It is A, inflation and unemployment, right? That's what we have been discussing. When you talk about the relationship of inflation and unemployment for a short period of time, that's called as Phillips curve. And there are long-term relations also. But a lot of criticisms have put across by have been put across by a lot of economists regarding Phillips curve as such, right? The trade-off between inflation and unemployment. And there is an inverse relationship. When there is price rise, unemployment decreases. When there is a, uh, when the price decreases, unemployment increases. That's how they are connected. Clear? The curve is suggesting that lower the inflation, higher the unemployment. Higher the inflation, lower the unemployment. Simple as that. So this is also important. Sometimes uh, in this current 2021 also, consider the following statement. In that perspective also, you can get a question. So these are very, very important areas. So don't leave it. A person called as A.W. Uh, Philip, A.B. Philip, uh, popular. He's called like that. He's the one who actually brought this idea. Clear? Alvin William uh, Philip. Okay? It is very much known after this economist called as A.W. Philip. That's why it's called as Philip Curve. The next one, again in the year 2000, and you see how many questions are coming from inflation. This is very, very important. That is why four classes I took for inflation. Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, Part 4, because so many questions have come for your previous UPSC examination from here. It's about Nairo. Remember, I taught you Nairo. Non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. You had a question based on that. First one, when monetary policy tried to hold unemployment below the national rate, inflation will be increasing to higher level, called as Nairo. Second, Nairo is that rate of unemployment which is consistent with the consolidated inflation. Third, it is the lowest rate of unemployment rate that economy can sustain without any upward pressure on inflation rate. Think and give the right answer. I have taught you upward, I have taught you downward, remember? So think. And the answer is option number D. All the was absolutely correct. So in the year 2009, you had a question from here. Clear? So here we go. We all know that, Chalo, this Nairo is nothing but the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. Take care. It is the rate of unemployment is absolutely consistent with the constant or the same rate of inflation. That is, be it the upward or the downward forces on inflation and unemployment. They will be able to neutralize each other. And there is no tendency of what? A change in the rate of inflation. So one more thing you have from inflation tax. So this year I feel that inflation tax could also be one of the important areas. You may get a question, you know. So inflation tax from the mock perspective, I have given a question. Consider the following statements regarding that. The level of deficit financing is directly related by the rate of inflation. Second, it is always the level to which the government may go for deficit financing. Third, the government in the form of prices and income policies under which the companies pay inflation tax on the salary increases above the set level prescribed by the government. Think and give the right answer. It's inflation tax. That is a price rise is acting like a tax here, called as inflation tax, right? Which one do you think is the right answer? Put Quickly put your answers in the chat box. And here we go. The answer is option D. Again, 1, 2, 3, sub kuch is correct, right? Which means that yes, when the inflation is always, uh, the inflation, when the level to which the government may go for the financing, guys, automatically more money supply, price rise, and that price rise will act as a tax called as inflation tax, right? 
or it is also known as uh, you know signorage that is inflation tax another name is signorage you may get this term also by upsc for examination so please have a look into it clear so now we are done with the most important mcqs and also the uh, you know uh, what the important concepts as such it's time for you to do a little of mains answer writing practice so here we go explain the importance or significance of inflation targeting while discussing the concerns over the efficacy of inflation targeting this is very much important from the monetary policy perspective you have to write the answer connecting the mpc monetary policy committee targets inflation targeting then your wholesale price index that is not required actually a cpi consumer price index you have to actually write answer pertaining to this clear so thank you so much my officers if you do like this video don't forget to click the like button share this video and also put your valuable valuable feedbacks in the comment box and also feel free to put the upcoming topics what you want to study so accordingly the next videos i'll start preparing uh, you know uh, lectures for that such kind of topic okay so thank you so much and quick uh, once again quickly a small reminder to you regarding the an academy maha subscription ka offer till june 16th you have this offer guys if you uh, take subscription for one year till the next year main subscription is extended and there are so many offers going on all what you have to do is use the code nisha ias life come and study for live classes become an ias officer with me that is nisha ias life get 10% discount and also come under the personal mentoring program and ensure that your preparation is on the right strategy and also for the free class which happens on an academy guys the same code nisha ias life you can use clear see the plus class if you see a lot even for ncrt we have batches once again from july uh, you know 14 another ncrt batch i'll be doing an economy chapter wise so you can follow me there then for the prelim sampurna 1200 mcq series for sab kuch you can follow me including the 6 to 7 pm free class which happens on mcq and academy just directly come to my profile 6 to 7 login and this video is from 7 to 7:30 clear any doubt queries feel free to get back to me so thank you so much my officers see you all with another fresh set of topic from tomorrow's class till then thank you and jai hind